Fine. Then just transfer the money. What? You should transfer the money to her account. You know she's having a hard time. You gave her most of your salary, didn't you? I don't think it's necessary. You are such a cold person. My name is Kelly, thirty-two years old. I work at a tax accountant's office in Tol. My husband, Louis, is two years younger than me, and we met at the bar where he works. We met each other at our workplace, and then we became friends. And after a year of dating, we got married. My husband grew up from a very different place from mine. He grew up in an institution. He doesn't have a father since little. He lived with his mother and grandmother in his grandmother's house. Then his mother just disappeared, and a year later, his grandmother passed away, leaving him alone in the world. He has been living in an institution since he was ten years old. He doesn't like talking too much about his child. I don't want to give him too much pressure, so I never asked. So when we got married, my parents asked me if I was okay that our background were so different. I told them that I liked him, and there was no problem, which is the truth. However, I was not hundred percent about that. My husband is a quiet. But very caring and gentle person, I think we could support each other in our lifetime. Sadly, after two years of marriage, everything is starting to be out of track. It all started when my mother-in-law appeared in front of us. She just showed up from nowhere, but it was an emotional reunion. My mother-in-law and my husband were sobbing dramatically. However. When I saw the two of them crying together in front of the entrance of our apartment, my heart was not touched at all. Instead, I thought she was a rather selfish mother. I'm so sorry. It has been a long time. I was dealing with some financial problems, and I didn't want to drag you into it. I know. I've been looking for you for a long time. I didn't know how to tell you, especially since I lost my house. But I'm glad to finally meet you. Yeah, me too. I think my husband was genuinely happy to see his mother again. But after all, she dumped him at the most important timing. To me, she's just an irresponsible mother. If she was chasing by the debt collector. Then how couldn't she worry about that? When she left her house, they were turned on her child and mother. If something horrible like this did happen, Louis would not have forgotten. It doesn't make any sense to me. What comes off of my mind is the scenario that my mother-in-law chased some guy and abandoned the child. She dyed her hair blonde and wears a mini skirt not for her age. Deep neck top. Her voice sounds like she drinks tons of alcohol every day. No, I should never judge a person by the appearance. I told myself, Louis is so happy to see her. I should be happy for them. If they are happy to see each other again, that's all. Again, I told myself strongly, it was nice to see you today. And I hope we get to see each other again. I'm sure we will. Thank you, but、um, I don't know if I can come here again. Why not? I don't have a place to live right now. Oh, I see. Louis looked at me. Oh no! I just told myself not to do this, but isn't it improper to do this? You can't just come out of the blue and tell your son you don't have a place to live. If you really care about your children, you wouldn't do something that would be the burden on their lives. I don't think common sense would apply to a mother who suddenly disappeared from home. The look in Louis's eyes is a "let her stay at home, please" look. Christ, I don't like it. 
but there is no proof that she did this on purpose. Maybe I'm thinking it too much. I should help here. I made eye contact with Louis's agreement. Mom, come live with us. Really? Thank you. My, that's a very quick thank you. Do you know how to pretend? That's getting more and more suspicious. Thank you so much. From today, we're going to live together. It seems she came and lived with us without feeling a little bit sorry. Since she came, Louis looks painful, but tried taking care of his mother very patiently. Well, never thought she would be any harmful. I looked her with a warm heart. I thought Louis must want to do something that he couldn't do in his childhood. However, within two weeks of his mother's day. The real her showed up. It happened to be when Louis went shopping at a store, and I was on a late shift. This was the first time we were alone. So, you are a tax account. What is the mother? She was in completely different tone of voice. Yes, I am. You must have a lot of money saved up. Oh. I hate this conversation. You talk very differently when Louis isn't here. He loves me. You knew that. He won't believe a word you say about me. By the way, you're earning money, right? Lend me some money. I don't want to. Come on, you should. Someone who earns money like you lends money to people in need like me. It's economy. I've never heard such a theory. Ah,、oh, this is why kids today are no good. You don't know anything about the world. Hurry up and give me the money. I'm not going to do that. After that, whenever we were alone together, it was all this kind of conversation. As Louis' mothers had planned, I could not tell Louis about this. I just couldn't say anything to Louis. Who was like mother this, mother that in front of me? Moreover, it was obvious that we would end up fighting if I told him. The first part is important, so I try to be patient, but my patience was limited to one month. Just as I was about to ask her to leave, to my surprise, she told me she was leaving the house. This is a blessing I could not. Have wished for, Mom. Are you really leaving? Yeah, I can't keep bothering you and Kelly forever. We're not that kind of people, and you can stay with us forever. Us? Stop with the pearls. I'm happy for it. Thanks. I found a new apartment. They said I don't even need a guarantor there. I won't have to bother you guys. That's right. Come, I'll show you now. It's only a five minutes walk from here, so let's go for a walk. Louis anxiously followed his mother. From then on, I started to lose my trust on Louis. Ever since his mother showed up, I have been neglected. My love matter for Louis, who puts his mother's wishes before everything else, was beginning to decrease. We followed her to the apartment and were surprised to see it. It was an incredibly shabby apartment. I believe it was a famous haunted house in this area. Louis saw this and looked at his mother with tears in his eyes. Mom. Let's go back to our home. It's okay. I'll live here. Just come visit me if you can. And his mother left our house the next day, but this was a trick of his mother. Louis fell into the trap made by his mother. Hey, Kelly, can you help my mother somewhat? Why should I? You sold that apartment. Don't you feel sorry for her? Yes, 
That was his mother's trap. She is trying to get money from us. I will never give it to her. Louis is completely not aware of this shabby trick. I won't give any money to your mother. Why not? Because she has rented an apartment, which means she has money. She is working somewhere. She does go out. She doesn't work. She's volunteering at the nursing house during the day. Volunteering? What a lie! I'm not going to believe that woman is a volunteer. I can't even think about that. What's your point? No, nothing. Anyway, I don't pay for it. Louis looked at me coldly. Kelly, you're fine as long as it's good enough for you, aren't you? What do you mean by that, Kelly? You make a lot of money than I do, and you think that I should listen to you? What are you talking about? When did I say that? It's in your attitude. Mom said it too. She said Kelly is a little scary. I bet she left because of you. I'm gonna cry. What did he see in me so far? You know nothing. And now you start to blame all the things on me. You don't even know your mother. You don't know what I've been going through ever since your mother showed up. Have you ever really think about it? Don't you dare blame me like that. After the big fight that day, our relationship collapsed. We didn't speak to each other for days, but a few days later, I received a phone call from Louis. I picked up the phone to see what was going on. You are at work, right? Yeah. I'm really sorry, but、um, I need you to go visit my mother. Why? Mom hurt her leg. She's having a hard time now. She'd be happy if you were there for her. And I can't leave the store today because I have a vendor coming in. So it means a lot if you can be there, Kelly. <clears throat> All right, I'll show up after work. Thanks. Long sighed after I hung up the phone. Even though things are getting rough with us, Louis called me when it was something about his mother. I feel more and more empty. I take the divorce papers out of the drawer and stare at them. I guess I'll just. Have to put an end to it. And after work, I headed for the haunted house. You are late. My mother-in-law's leg was bandaged. How are you feeling now? Not well. That's why you're here. Hurry up and make me some tea. She only gave the order and sat down on the sofa, limping. I reluctantly prepare a cup of tea from the cupboard. Why is there a passbook here? The passbook was at the far end of the cupboard. I glanced at my mother-in-law. She is enjoying watching TV. I quietly pick up the passbook and check its contents. Oh no! I couldn't help but come up with a sound. Shut up! Can't hear the TV. How long did it take for making a cup of matcha? Safe. She didn't notice. She keeps complaining while in watching the TV. Looking closely, I see that she has a nice collection of teacups and dishes. I realized everything. Please have your tea, and then I'm going home. What are you talking about? Where's dinner? Why don't you call it for yourself? Then you're paying for it. I don't think I should. You have so much money, mother. My mother-in-law, who saw the passbook in my hand, stood up quickly. You, it's mine. Don't you dare not give it back to me. There was no way that she, who was only about five foot five, could reach the hand that I, who was five foot ten, has raised. As I headed straight for the front door, she came at me with great force. Oh, I thought you broke your leg. 
You were limping just now. Just give it back to me. I left her house. When I returned home, Louis greeted me. Thank you for doing this for me. My mom must have been in a lot of pain. No, she was perfectly fine. No, she could not be. She must have been feeling down. So you gave her the money. From the looks of it, he hadn't heard from his mother. What money? You didn't give me any money. No, don't you feel sad when seeing my mother's pain? She's in desperate need of money, so I thought you would give her some. So, you think I should be the one to give her the money? Louis sighed loudly. Fine, then just transfer the money. What? You should transfer the money to her account. You know she's having a hard time. You gave her most of your salary, didn't you? I don't think that's necessary. You are such a cold person. I thought you'd understand when you saw mothers in pain. I've wasted so much time thinking about it. What is it that you've been thinking about? Is that your mother's been trying to pretend to be weak? Because you are not nice at all. This is the only way. I don't know what else you say. I threw the passbook at my husband. Look at this. Do you still think she's poor? Come on, wake up. What do you mean? Why does she have seventy million dollars? I don't know. That woman has money, and yet she's still trying to squeeze money from us. I mean, come on, man, face the truth. At the first place, she left you alone on the, this stage, and then all of a sudden just showed up, asking if she could live together, and then keeps asking for money not only from you but from me too. She's been asking me for money when you're not here. What makes you think that this is the person you should be protecting? That woman is nothing more than a hustler. If you still want to protect your mother, I won't say anything. But I want a divorce. I'm sick of it. You don't believe me even now. On the contrary, you try to set me up. You and your mother are just alike. Living in a shitty house, trying to take some money from me, you are just like your mother. I probably forgot something I wanted to say, but that's okay. I'm sure I don't understand how my husband believed in his mother that much. He has been waiting for her for a long time. I couldn't tell him that he's unloved and exploited. After that, my husband and I divorced. I didn't get alimony. This is the last mercy. I could not take the money from him after his beloved mother cheated him out of money, and of course no share of the common property. We agreed that our savings should be remain to our own separately. A month later, Louis was waiting for me in front of my office. I told him just say what he wants by standing there. He told me something unbelievable. My mother-in-law got arrested for theft and fraud. She had been cheating elderly people at the nursing house, where she volunteered by asking them for the. PIN numbers and passbooks. The elderly people's families found her and reported her to the police. She's in jail now. And then I heard that she got arrested again after other crimes came one to another. Fortunately, the money she tried to get from Louis was safe. The money was returned to the victims. Louis told me this, apologized. And disappeared from my presence. It was so sad to see his back. Thus ended my short marriage, but I'm glad it ended. The dark side of Louis was too much for me. I hope to find someone I can truly be with someday. I think I'm done with marriage. I'm more comfortable chasing numbers. I'm going to work harder and harder. And I might open my own office someday. This is my new goal for the time being. The mother-in-law is so obsessed with money, and the way Louis dealt with it was sad. Parents are a big part of child's character development, aren't they? Louis is truly a victim of his mother, 
Hope Kelly and Louis would have a bright future. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like. See you in the next video. My happy married life didn't last long. We have been married two years. I still have feelings towards my husband, and I spend every day devoting my time to him. I want him to continue to see me as attractive, so I always take care of myself and try to look good. However, I find out that my husband is having an affair. She's the love of my life. I want a divorce. One afternoon, I had believed my husband John was at work, but he suddenly came home with his lover. Divorce papers are in his hands. Since when? Um, since after the trip that we went on last year. His lover is sitting there with no expression on her face. When John says trip. He's probably referring to our honeymoon. We hadn't been able to go, so when I received an expected bonus, John said he wanted to go. So we made the decision at the last minute. Of course, I was the one that paid for it. According to John, his ex-girlfriend and current lover reached out to him during our honeymoon, and that is when he realized he still had feelings for her. What on earth are you talking about? We were on our honeymoon. There's no point saying that now. I love her. She needs me too. It's just we were a little late in realizing how we feel about each other. I do like you, but she's the one that I truly love. You've got to understand. How can I? How did he think I would sign the divorce papers? What about how I feel? John sighs as if he doesn't know what to do, and says, "You find someone better. You probably don't want to stay in this house anymore either. We'll live here. So you pack your stuff and leave in about a week." It's as if he doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. He's the one who asked me out and proposed to me, and now he's the one who is going to dump me. He took no responsibility for anything all throughout our marriage, and I have a sense that all my feelings towards him are suddenly disappeared, without even a word of apology from John. I signed the divorce papers. With this. My husband and his lover leave the house. We'll come back next week, so be out by then," he says. I feel like the inside of me is freezing. All of it is so sudden that I don't even shed a tear. And rather than feeling betrayed, I feel I have been deceived, which makes me feel so bad for myself and the situation I am in. The next day. I ask a friend to help gather all my belongings and return to my parents' house. Because I work as a nurse, while John is not paid so well at his company, I was the one paying most of the living expenses. Although I am shocked at John's having an affair and the divorce, I won't have to pay the rent anymore, which I am going to consider a great benefit in this situation. I've decided where I'm going to live, and I am packing my stuff again to leave my parents' house. Kathy, um, Jones here," says my mother. "It's raining outside, so I let him in." She looks at me apologetically. "What on earth does my ex-husband want with me after all this time?" He said, "I'm not the love of his life, so he can't be here to ask for me." To come back, is that the case? Does he want money? I feel it's rude to be making such an assumption. But considering how much he spent and how he complained about working while we were married, 
It's most natural to think that money is the reason he is here. Maybe I have something of his that he's forgotten. So I decided to go down the living room to hear what he has to say. What do you want? My father's voice is angry, but John is calm when he says, "I would like to talk to your daughter." He must have nerve to be calm in this situation. What do you want? I'm busy now, you know. I open the door to face him, hoping this is going to be quick. And I am lost for words. There, his lover, or rather his new wife, is sitting next to him, as if it's her right to be there. Why is she here? This is my parents' house. What are you thinking? Any normal person wouldn't bring this woman here, and it's insane that she thought it was okay to come along too. Bringing his former mistress to the house that I grew up in—it's more than insulting. Calm down. His attitude and words disgust me, and the woman is silent this time as well. Can we? Please get whatever you're here for over with as soon as possible. Possibly irritated at my attitude, John has a stern look on his face. This is important. We haven't discussed division of property yet. I'm just here to receive my share. Money. Just as I thought. John looks excited. Yeah, you're right. Of course. I knew he would be here soon enough, so I was ready. I bring out my purse and hand him thirty cents. Here, this is your share. What? John and his new wife stare at the three dimes placed on the palm of his hand. What is this? He thrusts the coins on the floor. His new wife suddenly speaks up too. Are you kidding me? You can't call this property. Quit fooling around. They are both red in the face. That's all the savings that we have left. John must have thought there was more. But I calmly tell him. Unfortunately, this is reality. But he snores and looks down at me, saying, "What are you talking about? There's more. I know there is. You had two hundred thousand dollars. Hurry up and give me my share of a hundred thousand." He waves his hands around in an annoying gesture, and his wife is there next to him, nodding. I am shocked and stare at him. Not making a move. You're the one who said you want this over as soon as possible. Hand me the money then. He starts screaming and throwing things in the house around. And he's a completely different person to the man I knew. Seeing these, must be his true colors. I am so happy that I got to leave him. Hearing the large sounds and shouting, my dad, who had left the room, and my brother, who just got home, enter the living room. Dad is frozen at the sight of John going crazy, but he grabs his arms and put them around his back, stopping him from messing the room up any further. I briefly explain the situation to my brother, who is a lawyer, and because he knows about the divorce. He understands what is going on quickly enough. Joan's new wife hears our conversation and figures out that Joan is a lawyer. Hey, I never heard your ex-wife had a lawyer in the family. Her eyes are wide and she is screaming at John. I wonder why these two are so persistent about money. So, although I don't want to speak with John at all. I decide to ask John, "Why do you need the money so badly? You divorced me because you said this woman 
is the woman of your dreams. You chose to be with her rather than me. And that's why you wanted me to leave. Yes, that's right. But division of property is important. That house we have now is, in the end, the house that you and Nala lived in together. So we want to build a new house of our own. We want children, so we need a car. And I want to take them on a nice vacation too, you know. I want to do the duties that any normal husband would do. Which is why I'm here. Though it's tough for me. Every reason he mentions, it's so selfish. Okay, so he didn't want to come here. I don't want him here either. He doesn't know how terrible what he did was, so he doesn't seem sorry at all. And I financially supported our marriage. Handing over my share is the least you can do to thank your dear ex-husband, don't you think? He snorts again. What did he just say? That he supported me financially? Maybe I heard wrong. John had no will of working, and he would return home from work as soon as possible because he wanted to play online games. Whenever he didn't feel like it, he would take a day off. So he'd use up all his paydays off soon enough that he'd have to pretend he was ill. He had no will of earning more money. And he took full advantage of the fact that I was a nurse and was paid well. As for living expenses, he handed me $100 several times when he felt like it. But to be honest, it was like he was an, an unemployed boyfriend who just lived in their girlfriend's apartment without doing anything. John never did any of the housework. And maybe I could understand if he had thanked me for my hard work. But I am so disappointed by his unreasonable words of I financially supported our marriage. I was the one paying all the living expenses. How can you say that? According to what you just said then, you should actually give me back the 30 cents that I just gave you too, you know? What are you talking about? You really don't know anything, do you? Mrs. You too. I'm sure you were excited when you heard about my savings, but I have bad news for you. I am still calm and Jung and his wife glare at me. From here, my brother speaks on my behalf. Excuse me, I'm Henry Thompson and I'm a lawyer. Please allow me to explain on behalf of my sister. Only the savings made by the couple while they were married are subject to division of property. This means that any money saved up before the marriage is not. My sister saved up the $200,000 before marriage, which means that it is her own property and cannot be divided between the two of you. You only had 60 cents left in your share account. Therefore, your share is half of that, which is 30 cents. There is no point complaining about this amount. It seems my sister was saving up for your future, but I believe you spent it all on your lady sitting next to you. Henry says all this very calmly, and John and his wife are shocked. But, he tries to shrug back though. What I just said, I said as Catherine's brother. But please allow me to speak now, as her attorney. My client has requested you pay her a compensation. Why have you not made this payment? Exactly. I had requested the compensation, but John had only paid me partially. And I wondered why the rest of my payment had not been made yet. 
That is why I officially asked my brother to step in between us. My actual lawyer is his colleague, but we had not expected John to come here today. So, Henry is acting on my lawyer's behalf. With Henry's razor sharp gaze and words, John and his wife turned silent. You ask for your share. Since you were the one who had an affair, you were the cause of the divorce. I do not believe it makes sense for you to ask for any amount. It seems as you were spending all the money that my sister had been saving up for the two of you too. And my sister's request is that you return the total amount that you owe her, as well as paying the compensation. That's impossible! Honey, let's stop this. We can't push this any further. John is standing up and kicking the table, and his wife tries to hold him down. When Henry will not budge and mentions the word court, it seems John has given up and he starts speaking the truth. After the divorce, it seems he was fired. And since his wife is unemployed too, they started borrowing money. As a result, they now have so much debt that they can't pay the compensation. When they were trying to come up with a way to earn money, they remembered my savings. They thought I would give them half the amount if they mentioned division property. I am shocked and speechless. When they change their attitude 180 degrees and beg me to help them. Next to me, my brother is shaking his head, indicating that I shouldn't listen to them. I don't feel any empathy for them at all, and tell them they still need to pay me back the compensation and my savings. I then ask my brother and father to see them out. These past few hours were like a storm. My mom comes back into the room with a sigh of relief and starts cleaning up. My dad is furious, saying, What a terrible man, and helps her. My brother rubs my back. You did nothing wrong. What you did today, and the divorce itself, too. You should be confident, he says, comforting me. He adds that we need to make sure they pay the compensation. And he calls his colleague right away. All of us at the law firm are on your side, he says. I'm exhausted, Mom. You did a great job. Why don't we all go out to have steak tonight to make ourselves feel better? I collapse onto my mom, hugging her. My dad and brother agreed to going out. So we have a wonderful time for dinner that night. Later, with the help of my brother, his colleague, and the law firm, the compensation and used savings are being returned. John and his wife seem to have no luck with job interviews, and I hear they have ended up working several part-time jobs each. It's not like they will be buying a house or a car or go on vacation for a while. It seems they are finally grateful to me after experiencing the life they have now. So when we see each other on the street, they politely say hello to me. I feel so much better seeing that they have at least made this slight progress. As for me, I am currently in a steady relationship with the attorney that worked for me on this case. Henry is happy, saying that this man is perfect for me. One year after the divorce, I am thinking to introduce my new boyfriend to my parents soon. I am sure they will be very happy for me. The reason why I feel this way is because when my ex-husband mentioned the love of his life, I didn't really understand what he was saying. But now, I feel 
that maybe this man truly is the love of my life. Hey, Eric, mommy, you're back! Yay! Where's daddy? Eric got uncomfortable with this question. He looked down and said, "Um, I don't know. What's going on, love? You're keeping secrets with mommy." Eric did not say anything, but he kept looking down at the floor anxiously. I sensed that something was wrong. I called up my husband. David, where are you? I came for a vacation with our son. I hung up the call. We immediately packed the bags and left the house. Hello, my name is Caroline. I'm forty years old. I'm married to David, who's forty-two years old. We've been married for the last ten years. I and David used to work at the same office. That's how we know each other. We fell in love with each other and got married. We were a happy couple. After two years of our marriage, our son Eric was born, and our family seemed complete. Eric is now eight years old. Soon after our marriage, David got a better opportunity from a different company, and he switched to a different company. I continued to work in the same company, and now I'm in a senior position, and I have to travel for a few days a month for business trips. When my son Eric was three years old, I was offered a promotion at work with the clause that I would have to travel for business purposes for a few days a month. I was reluctant to accept, as Eric was too small to be left alone. But David supported me. Don't worry, honey. I'll take care of Eric. Are you sure? Eric is too small. Absolutely, he's my son too. Besides, it's just a matter of a few days. Okay, then I'll accept the promotion. David was always supportive of my work. He used to take care of Eric when I went on these trips. I was so grateful to David for being so caring and supportive. Our life was pretty smooth until one day, my father-in-law called. Hey, David. I was thinking of stepping down from the business. So I could no longer take on the stress of business. All okay, Dad? Yeah, everything's fine. Just that I'm getting older. You know, it's time for you to take over the business. David replied politely, "Dad, you know I have worked hard to make my identity. Now you just want me to leave everything and join your business." David, you knew this was coming. I've let you do everything you wanted until now, but this is one thing which you should do for the family. Dad, you can't force me. I'm not forcing you. Think about it. How long would you work at the job? The business will give you the flexibility to enjoy the later part of your life. But Dad, you are my only heir. If you refuse to run the company, then I'll have to sell it off as I can't manage it any more. I didn't mean that. Okay, then wind up your work in a month and join the business. But Dad, you've run the business so efficiently for so many years. I'm afraid I'll not be able to manage so well. You would learn as you run it. I too didn't know anything about business until I started doing it on my own. Okay, Dad, I'll give the notice to my company and wrap up my work there. Although David was happy at his job, he knew that he would have to take over the family business at some point. So he was prepared for this, just that he did not realize that this would happen so soon. Soon after David joined his family business, I noticed a gradual change in his attitude. He would come home late, spend the evenings all by himself on his phone, and was mostly away on the weekends. This continued for a few months. After a while. I could not take it any longer and decided to confront him. David, is everything fine with you? Yes. What happened? I've been noticing a change in your attitude for the last few months. Change? What are you even talking about? I wanted to have this conversation with him so that we could fix it, but he simply ignored that anything was wrong. I got furious at his ignorance. Don't act as if you don't know what I'm talking about. You come home late almost every day. Some days, when you're early, instead of spending time with me or Eric, you are busy on your phone. David replied in a stern voice, "This is happening because I'm busy. I no longer work for a company where I can wrap up my work at 7 p.m. It is my business now. I have to give time to it. Even after coming home, I have to coordinate with other departments over the phone. What about the weekends?" Yes, sometimes we have work on weekends too. 
I didn't know what to say, hence I went out of the room to calm down. Although David's reasons were legitimate, I still wasn't convinced. I could feel the coldness growing between us, which I just could not explain to David. I decided to give him the benefit of doubt and give him some time to settle into the business. Besides, David was a caring father to Eric and would take care of him while I was away. He used to take his time off and take Eric for small vacations when I was on the business trips. Two years passed. David got busier with his business and now he sometimes does not come home at all. Although we lived under the same roof, we barely spoke to each other. I kept wondering to myself if my work was the reason behind our growing distance. Sometimes I felt too lonely. I had no one to discuss my problems with. My parents were in their late 70s so I didn't want to stress them out with my problems. I lost touch with most of my friends as I got busy with my family and work. David's presence in my life was almost negligible. My only hope was my son, Eric. Although he was too young to understand my problem, yet spending time with him makes me happy and relieved. It kept me going. But recently, I observed that Eric was distracted. His grades were falling in the monthly tests and he was spending way too much time on video games. David has been pampering Eric a lot with all kinds of video games, automatic car toys and whatnot. The next time when David brought expensive video games for him, I resisted. David, Eric already has a lot of video games and toys. This new one is unnecessary. What do you mean? Now I can't give gifts for my son? What do you want? Eric's grades have been falling and he is too distracted these days. He is always on video games which is not good for his mental growth. He is my son. He would find a way for himself. You don't need to worry about him. Well, he is my son too. I need to ensure that he's raised to be an educated and responsible person. Are you trying to taunt me that I'm an irresponsible person? I have been taking care of Eric since he was three years old, when you left him at home for your business trips. I was shocked at his words. It was he who volunteered to take care of Eric. Besides, he is the father of Eric, so he has the responsibility too. Wasn't it you who asked me to take the promotion and you volunteered to take care of Eric? Yes, it was me. You should be grateful to me for supporting you, but all you do is just complain. I have always been grateful to you for supporting me. That's the reason I'm still with you in this house, despite your cold behavior towards me. Saying this, I broke down. Oh, please, don't try to play the victim in front of me. I lost my patience and shouted at him. You know what? I'm done with you. I no longer have any affection or gratitude for you. Whatever you have done for taking care of Eric, it was your duty as a parent. I don't owe you anything for this. David, too, yelled back at me. You're such an ungrateful woman. Women like you can never be happy, and neither keep their husbands happy. David had never raised his voice at me like this. Even if we were not talking properly, he was never mean to me. He was a changed man now. These words pierced my heart like a knife and I was howling in pain. I locked myself up in the bathroom and cried my heart out. Eric overheard the fight between David and me. He saw me locking myself in the bathroom and when I didn't come out after a long time, he started knocking on the door. Mommy, come out! I heard him crying outside the bathroom. I washed my face, came out and hugged him. Mommy, I was afraid when you locked yourself for so long. My bad, honey. I was taking a bath. But your hair is still dry. I cracked up and pulled his cheeks. Aren't you too smart for your age? Do you want to have some spaghetti for dinner? Eric got excited on hearing this. Yeah, spaghetti. Seeing his smile, I forgot all my pain. All this while, David was lying down on the couch, busy on his phone. I made dinner, fed Eric and put him to sleep. I had a flight for my business trip the next morning. So I packed my bags and slipped a note of my travel details to David on his study table. 
Ever since our relationship got cold, I slip a note of my travel details on David's study table so that he makes himself available for Eric or drops him at my in-law's house. The next morning, I went for my scheduled trip. However, the recent confrontations with David just kept me haunted. I was not able to concentrate on the work. It was a three-day trip, but on the second day, I started feeling feverish and weak. So I decided to shorten the trip. I called up my manager and told him that I felt sick. He coordinated with the travel department and scheduled my return flight immediately on the same day. I returned home thinking of having a good time with my son. I saw that the main door of the house was locked and the lights were also off. I unlocked the door with the duplicate key and went inside. The living room was dark. I switched on the lights and went upstairs to Eric's room. I saw Eric playing with his video games lying on his bed. Hey Eric, my love, what are you doing here? And why all the lights in the house are switched off? Seeing me, he got excited and ran toward me. Mommy, you're back, yay! Where's Daddy? Eric got uncomfortable with this question. He looked down and said, Um, I don't know. When did he leave the house? I don't know, Mommy. Dad asked me not to tell you anything. What do you mean, honey? What's going on, Eric? You're hiding secrets from Mommy. Eric did not say anything, but he kept looking down at the floor anxiously. I sensed that something was wrong. I called up my husband. David, where are you? I came for a vacation with our son. I was shocked. David was lying. That was the last nail in the coffin. The phone was on speaker. Eric, too, heard everything. I hung up the call. I stared at him and he started sobbing. After this, Eric told me everything. It was so horrible to hear. Mommy, whenever you used to go for a trip, Daddy left me alone in the house. What? He was still sobbing. I sat him down on my lap and hugged him. Sweetheart, since when Daddy's leaving you alone? When I was small, Daddy took care of me, never left me alone. But now he locks me inside the house. He keeps the food in the fridge for me to eat and gave me video games to play. When does your father come? Daddy comes late in the night and again goes out in the morning. I could not believe what my little son was going through while I was away. I blame myself too for leaving him at David's disposal. Honey, why didn't you tell me? First, Dad used to leave me for a few hours, but he brought a lot of chocolates and toys for me. But now he is away for the whole day. Dad asked me to promise that I won't tell you anything. I could not see him crying like this. Okay, calm down now. Mommy's here. I'm sorry, Mommy. Dad got me the latest video games. I kept my promise and didn't tell you anything. I'm sorry, baby, that you had to go through so much. I could not believe my ears. What kind of father would do that? David was rewarding Eric for hiding this secret. I felt disgusted. I could no longer stay in that house or let my child see that horrible man. We immediately packed the bags and left the house. I hired an investigating agency to investigate David. After dropping Eric to my aunt's place, I went to David's parents and narrated the entire incident. My mother-in-law could not believe that David could do such things. Caroline, don't get me wrong. Perhaps there can be some misunderstanding. It is not wise to take such a big decision on Eric's words. He's a small kid. What do you mean? I understand what you're going through, but you can once talk to David if there's another part of the story. Although her intention was not bad, she was just advising me to have a confrontation with David before taking any decision. But at that moment, I was too furious to understand her intention. Do you think that Eric is making up all these things? If David was not wrong, why did he lie to me that he was on a vacation with Eric? Well, he might have been busy with work. I lost my patience and told them everything. This is not the only incident. Your son has been giving me the cold shoulder since he joined the business. 
He comes late at home, barely spends time with Eric, and spends his weekends away from home. Are you trying to say that all these are happening because David joined his family's business? My father-in-law interrupted. Brianna, stop. Caroline is right. I never thought David would turn out to be like this. After he joined the business, a few of my senior employees gave me a hint of David's growing closeness with his assistant. What? Why didn't you tell me about this? I brushed it away as gossip. People tend to enjoy these types of gossip at work. I thought David was too mature to have an affair. He loved you and Eric so much. I should have taken it seriously. I regret it now. Please forgive me, Caroline. I sat there numb. I didn't say anything. Brianna was shocked too. They both were devastated. David had a reputation as an ideal son, ideal husband, and ideal father. He has disappointed everyone. I was not angry with my father-in-law because I too never doubted David of having an affair, despite things getting colder between us. I thought that we have fallen out of love because of our working schedules. I was so naive to think that when Eric grows up, me and David would be relieved from our parental duties and work commitments. Then we'll spend our retirement days again happily together. After I left my in-laws' house, I started getting calls from David. Probably my in-laws called and confronted him. I ignored his calls and blocked him. I moved in with my aunt for a few days and started looking for a house. After a few days, the investigating agency sent the reports and it was true. David was having an affair with his assistant, Lily. He used to skip his office and spend all day at her place when I was away for a trip. I hired a lawyer and sent the divorce papers along with the copy of photo evidence I got from the agency. Lily was a single mother of a five-year-old girl. She was divorced by her ex-husband on the charges of an extramarital affair when she was pregnant. While applying for the job, Lily played a victim card and told that she divorced her husband because he was cheating on her while she was pregnant. Seeing her helplessness as a single mother, my father-in-law gave her a job despite her low qualifications. She lied to everyone at the office to get sympathy. Probably she said the same story to David, but her true color was revealed by the investigation agency. The agency fetched the details of her ex-husband too. Lily was divorced by her ex-husband without any alimony or child support because her husband alleged that the baby was not his. The DNA report also proved the same. I sent all these details to David through my lawyer. My lawyer told me that David was devastated to see those details, and he broke up with her. He accused Lily of breaking into our house. David was not ready to divorce me. He loved Eric and couldn't lose him. He told the lawyer that he got influenced by Lily and pleaded for a second chance. He also admitted that it was Lily's idea to lock Eric at home because her daughter stays alone at home when Lily goes to work. I might have given him another chance if it was just me who was hurt, but now it is the question of my child's safety and upbringing. I can't raise Eric with a father who bribes his son for lying. After suffering for so long, I was adamant to get a divorce. It wasn't a matter of a few days or months. David cheated on me for so many years, yet I never doubted his loyalty. I could never forgive him for breaking my trust. I did not agree to any settlement but divorce. My father-in-law apologized for David's mistakes and stood by my side all this while. Everyone at the office knew and gossiped about David's affair and the divorce. My father-in-law could not take this shame and threw out David and Lily from the company. He ran the company again for a few years before selling it off to another businessman for a hefty amount. He has cut off David's name from his will and instead gave his inheritance to Eric. David was disowned by his parents as he had broken their trust too. David shifted to the other side of the city as everyone in the neighborhood looked down upon him for cheating on me with his assistant. Meanwhile, I took a transfer to a different department where I didn't have to travel. Now, I can manage my house and work efficiently. I've hired a full-time nanny to take care of Eric. I'm planning to quit my job in a few years as I have saved enough for my retirement. 
I want to enjoy my life to the fullest with my son. I wish Eric grows up to be an educated and responsible person.